I was kind of a, at the second and third and fourth grade, I was a real fighter, a real battler. I didn't always win the wrestling fights, but I got into a hell of a lot of them. And I, I, would, I would enter a fight just to, any excuse whatsoever. I became perceptive of, of societal things. And so I was often elected to be chairman of this or chairman of that or chairman of something else. I became a good boy in the upper grades. I saw that, that there was more fun and rewards for being a more or less citizen as long as I could have some fun on the side <laughs> and drag some of my compatriots into the, into the mix. <laughs> and they never would have done it themselves, but <laughs> they were wary. But this was kind of fun. Oh man, <laughs> that was when I, that was when I was citywide chairman of the uh, Safe and Sane Halloween program. So, <laughs> so I went to the to the festivities and all the all the stuff and had pictures taken and one thing and another. Then that evening. I told the guys, you know, I've got, I got me a weather balloon, guys, and I got a, I got a tank of uh, hydrogen. Anybody up for it? <laughs> and Jack Seeley and a couple of other guys thought that sounded like a lot of fun. Well, what else did you have besides the the helium and the weather balloon? A uh, case of dynamite <laughs> with, a, with a very, 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 very long fuse. A fuse that would burn for about 30 minutes and rig that sucker up on, on, on Alkey Point uh, uh, in West Seattle and uh, let her rip and just turn tail and got a long way away from it. We were almost home when the thing went off and it's a big hoo and uh, went to bed said, that's that. And papers were full in the morning of the, that the Coast Guard spent the rest of the night seeking the sunken ship in Elliott Bay and didn't find anything. <laughs> and the fact that you laugh about it, you have enough youthful juices in you to say that was a pretty funny thing. Dangerous as hell, stupid as hell, but it was a fun thing. Going to Stanford was a, was a great experience. My buddies and I, Norm Brown, and Sam Stearns, Jack Seeley, spread some wild oats and lived life as it could be led. I still got good grades. Did that, but I did nutty stuff too. Gradually, gradually, gradually over the years, I calmed down. Especially when I met girls. Yeah, most particularly after I met Flo. After I met Flo, there was nothing else. Nothing else. It's as clear in my mind as if it were yesterday. It's hard for me to talk about it without weeping. Time came for the end of the rushing season, and that always involved a banquet for the rushies and their dates. And if they didn't have dates, the brothers would find dates for them. I said, oh, shit. I, I don't have a date. Oh, why not? God, I, I never got around to it, so I said, that's true, I'll, I'll go by myself. And he said, my, my sort of senior guy, Bill Butler, said, uh, bullshit, you are not going alone. You are going with a date, Bates, and you have no choice in the matter. And he he spoke to his, uh, his girlfriend, who uh, asked Flo if she had a date. Well, she said, I didn't have a date, but there's a family wedding, a, a wedding of people close to the family up in Burlingame where she lived, and said, I've, I've been planning to go to that. And uh, somehow it came up in talking with her father. She said, you know, I, I have kind of a dilemma. I've got this blind date that I'm being asked to go to, and, uh, and this wedding of somebody I really like, I'd really like to go to. And his comment was, for God's sakes, girl, go get your own man. 
And there it was. She agreed for no good reason. She agreed and there she was standing in the dormitory when I came to pick her up and holy shit. It turned out to be a really, really fun time. She was lively and the people around her, hey, hey you guys, come see who Bates is with. Da 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 da. And this was, this was really a, a big thing, especially for being the, the rushing chairman. And the, the chairman got a dandy lady and da da da, that was, that was all wonderful. We went back to the fraternity and the group all milled around in the basement where there was a pool table and set up drinks and one thing and another. And Flo and I didn't talk to anybody else in this packed room for the whole evening. We, I still weep about it. I, I get emotional about it. But we found that we had so much in common. It was just, uh, it was bizarre. Oh, wait a minute, you like that too? You did that also? Your parents said that to you? That, uh, my God, we've lived the same life in two different families. I took her home to the dorm at the end and I, I was too bashful to kiss her. But uh, I was pretty excited. And uh, I guess that it was uh, the next day she called. And I, th I think she called actually to make the date uh, for a, a basketball game up in the city. And came home and I uh, kissed her goodnight. And who without a big deal. And as I left, I remember so clearly saying, my God, I could live the rest of my life with that lady. I never changed my mind. Flo becoming pregnant with Mary Ellen it was as accidental as the birth of all the rest of you. Nothing was planned. It, we just let, let it happen. For Flo's father, this was, you're pregnant, for God's sakes, what do you think you're doing? He was just distraught. Don't you know something about birth control? And I went through this, well, well look, I've got this thing all wired. We're gonna be able to just do out our term back there in St. Louis and then come back home with the baby. And it's just gonna work out fine. Well, no, don't worry about it. And <laughs> stupidest goddamn thing I've ever heard of. And then came the armistice. And the armistice changed everything. The guys who've been over there fighting in Korea get to come home now. And these other guys who've been training get to come over to the Far East. And I got caught in the draft. So it was going to be about 10 months that I'd be there before my itch was up. That Christmas they made the, the movie that they sent to me. I had gotten a package and the package was uh, had the note in it. Here's, here's the picture of your daughter enjoying her Christmas over here. And then I just couldn't wait to show that. And the only place I could show it was at the base theater. And this was uh, about, uh, oh, I don't know, 15 or 30 minutes before the evening film was to be shown in the, in the theater. So I played the whole thing before the audience even came in still. So I got to see it a couple of times. And then he showed it for the for the incoming audience. And oh oops. Oh, that's routine. And then he gave it to me and I got to ship it home. My time was up. I got to go home. And uh, I was just eager as could be to see Mary Ellen. And for the next few weeks, it was a matter of her trying to give me the opportunity to be a daddy, but finding that I was pretty clumsy at that point. But little bit by little bit, I learned. Mom made the household. She absolutely made her life to be that which would make your life the best. And uh, there was nothing in that that I didn't like. She realized that she had a, another baby, a big baby. 
in the house and and coddled me a, a bit. I just followed her as intently as I could as far as raising the kids. Here and there I could give them an adventure or fun thing that wouldn't have occurred to her. And that was my, my contribution besides just being there. I was the bringing up children helper. I sought to encourage you on things that you thought were fun, even though they might have been a little bit bizarre. And you tended to, to gain from even the crazy things that you did. And I mean, that, that's what makes a really, really full life, is to have not just the monomaniacal view, the uh, inverted telescope view. You, uh, you look at things that are fun and that are interesting that you can do, maybe do better than others, and then you look for the things on the side that, that work into that. None of you are one-uppers. And the one-upper is the kind of a person that I have the most trouble with in the world. You're not one-uppers. You eschew one-uppers. You see them. You see them for what they are. You're never taken in. And it isn't because I told you that way. Or, or, the, or the mom taught you that way. Uh, you were smart enough to see it and to figure it out and understand it and be praised for understanding it. That's my view. And it just breaks me up to even think of it. I'm so proud of you. It is indeed, Craig. It is indeed. And, and I, uh, I have no regrets and am feeling, am feeling fine. And it's my choice to uh, come into the hospice rather than to undertake some other things that might conceivably have had some life-extending capabilities. I'm not eating anymore or drinking anymore, and that obviously has its, uh, its terminal end before very long. But, uh, but I'm being kept extremely comfortable during it. Now, I'm, I'm feeling very good, Greg, and I'm especially good having had a chance to talk to you. It's, you've been fabulous friends uh, throughout all of our lives. And we're, we're, I feel that we're, <coughs> we're all the better for it. <laughs> okay, thanks so much for calling, Craig. Bye-bye. Good old Craig. Your life is your life. Nothing against that hospital. I think when somebody is as old as I am, and they feel that their job is to say, God damn it, we got to get him to 90. And I'm 80. And now wait a minute, guys. That's, that's, not, that's not humane medicine. And so, so uh, I, uh, I eschew that. I said that that doesn't, does not make sense. I, I, I invite any opinions and I would not, would not, uh, anger at any any opinions, the contrary opinions. But if I think of I think of myself and I think of all of you and I think of of having this this pleasant experience. And this is a pleasant experience with you with you, people like I I like and love. I'm not gonna have any happier experiences than that. You know, I'm I'm in a in a reasonably good shape right now. But it's you know <clears throat> I'm getting close to the edge of the cliff. It's, it's going to go. And there's not a damn thing that can be done about it. And so why not go out happy? With fond memories. I can't say too young to die. Not when I'm as old as I am. <laughs> older. Older than dirt. Hey, even dirt has a life. <laughs> and a final life. So, I'm a happy camper. I'll miss all you guys. And wherever I am, I'll probably be thinking about you. Well, there we are. There we are. Depending on how, uh, 
how fast I fade away. If you can contribute, can, can communicate all that to the family. Well, you just did. Oh, on this? Oh. It was on, huh? It was all on. Yep. That's one of the things about the baits. They're sneaky. You've noticed that at times, haven't you? 